Well, Mitch, you didn't get the result last week, but you must have taken a lot of heart out of that second half performance. Yeah, um, you know, it was great. Obviously, it was disappointing, you know, the referee. A couple of bad decisions, but I thought the boys pulled that aside and really fought back. And if we probably took our chances, you know, we could have got the three points on the other night. Personally, looking forward to coming up against the old boys this weekend? Yeah, it's going to be a bit of fun. I've already copped a few text messages. So, no, I'm really looking forward to it. And it's going to be a big game. Um, Brizzy is going to come out and play, which is going to be good for us. And I think it's going to be really exciting for the fans. So, you know, if we, if we put in that second half performance, I think, you know, we can get the, the three points this weekend. Bruce is a big out for them. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good he's not playing, but um, Henrique is going to be. But I think Henrique will step in for him, and you know he's a quality player, so they're not really going to miss much. Not, not much is going to change. And Brisbane's form the other night was pretty ominous. Yeah, they, they look good, so um, you know they're going to be up for it. And if we uh, if we play the the way we can, I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's been a good two games, but yeah, there's a long way to go, and you know I feel I played my part for the team. And, can add a bit more, but uh, I think if we keep working the way we have, uh, you know, it's going to be a you know a rewarding season. A lot of speculation around it could be Ange's last game for the club on Friday. How would you feel if that's the case? Yeah, you know, it'll be a, you know another weird feeling. Um, had him in Brisbane and then he left and come here and he might leave again. But um, no, you know that's that's take that you know the FFA and the club will uh, you know go through that and and they'll decide what's best for the Socceroos and for Melbourne Victory. You could probably give us as good as insight as anyone in, in terms of what Ange is like as a, as a coach. Tell us about what he did for Brisbane up there and the way he sort of swept through and moulded a club into what it became, you know, back-to-back -back championships and all that sort of thing. Yeah, you know, he, um, he come in and he, he does does what he wants to do and um, he'll bring the players in that you know he wants and play the style of football he wants and he won't stop at that. Um, I think you can see by Brisbane and, and by what he's doing here, you know, Nothing changes week, week in, week out, and, and if young boys have to step in, um, it'll continue the same. And I think that's just him. He's just driven to really play his style of football and, and get that across and, and play attractive football because I, I don't think uh, anyone can argue with why we played at Brisbane and what we've done here is, uh, you know, it excites the crowd. Can you talk about... Tell us about the relationships he forms with the players. There's obviously a massive sort of respect there to, to get the results that he does, you know, not only in Brisbane but then last year as well down here. Yeah, like um, I think it's just so demanding on the training field. Uh, you know, he he puts his structure in place, and and if you follow that, he shows that you know you'll play good football and you'll get results. And you know, he's helped some people move on in their career into bigger and better things. So I think that's where the respect comes from players. Like off off the pitch, um, I don't think I've ever had a conversation with him really. So, <laughs> so that's pretty good. Was he a big reason why you moved down here? Yeah, of course, he was probably the main reason. Um, I knew what. He was about in Brizzy and what he could do for me, and yeah, I thought it was the best decision for me if I needed to change. I get for you personally, given you know Ange so well and he knows you so well, does it help your Socceroos ambitions if he does take over? Yeah, I've already been. The boys have been joking that I'll be first on that plane to the World Cup, <laughs> but um, nah, it just really for me the Socceroos is if I'm playing well and whoever the coach is, if um, I'm doing the right thing for my club. You know, it can be picked, but yeah, it just comes down to the coach. Is that the thing, like you were saying, so if someone, if Muskie were to take over, for example, does the game plan and everything that Ange just put in place over the pre-season just stay exactly the same and, and roll through for the rest of the season with the players that you've already got on board? Yeah, I think we've done too much work already for, um, for if Muskie did step into the role that um, it would change because, you know, it would be like starting from scratch again. And, you know, we've, we've done too much work, so I think we'll just carry on and... And everyone knows the you know the positions in and out now. So, you know, if if Muskie does take over, um, you know, we'll just carry keep going forward. How much how much distraction is this causing with all this speculation? No, nah, none at all. No, nah, no one. We don't. We just joke about it, and we see as much as um, what you've put out there. So, really, we're just focusing on Friday night against Brisbane, and and like I said, getting the first three points of the year and a good performance in front of our home crowd.